What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Four Tip Make It Loco channel. Uh, today, I want to give you a quick shop update because uh, I have a lot of videos shot, a lot of in-depth videos that are longer. Uh, I have a lot of escape videos shot for some reason. I think I'm burning you guys out on escape videos. Uh, so I want to give you a quick shop update because there's a lot of interesting projects going on here. There's some exciting news uh, that you'll see here in a second. And I just want to kind of walk around with you guys and show you uh, what's going on in the shop this week. And then hopefully this weekend I can get a few things shot and edited uh, for a Monday video on the 543 valve. That's going to be interesting and different. All right. Let's go ahead and take a walk around and check it out. All right. Let's start off in this corner right here. So if you guys don't know it already from social media, yes, this week I'm replacing two engines at the same time. So they're both 543 valves, of course. This is an 07 Expedition, and that one over there is a 2012 Navigator. And I really feel I lucked out with these two vehicles coming in at the same time like this. Now this one, like I said, is an 07, it's a little bit older, but guess what, it's from down south, Mississippi. So look at these frame rails. I mean, things like rust free. So as you can imagine, it came out nice and easy. And then that one over there, yes, it's from Chicagoland, uh, but it's a 2012, so much less time on the road to get rusted up. So all the fasteners and everything are coming out on that one, nice and easy also. And the other good thing is I'm doing them back to back, okay? So all the same shop equipment's out, same tools in the cart and all that stuff. So it makes it a lot easier, much faster for me and the customer in the end. Real quick, I want to go over a couple different things now that these engines are all torn out of here. And it's very easy to illustrate a couple quick points on here. So Ford on, on the newer vehicles or on just about everything, they're using these quick to connect coolant hoses. Okay, So for years, Ford used them for the heater hoses only and there was never a problem. For years, probably 20, 30 years now, never a problem. But now they're using them for everything. And you guys with the 5.0s know uh, that, you know, the coolant crossover right here, the Y pipe and all that, they like to leak all the time. They're quick to connects like this, okay? And the degas bottle hoses and all that stuff, they all like to leak. Well, now they're using for upper and lower radiator hoses. And whenever you touch one of these, this is a really good point, a little tip for you guys. Whenever you touch one of these hoses and disconnect it, like this one goes to the radiator, let's say you're servicing something, and you disconnect it, at that point, you need to replace that hose, or on some models, you can actually get the replacement O-ring from inside there. The reason being is this hose has been connected to that component for 80, 100,000 miles. You go to disconnect it off of there, and you disturb that O-ring in there, and then you try to reconnect it, guess what? It's gonna start leaking on you. So whenever you pull one of these off, replace it or replace the O-ring if possible, all right? so you avoid a problem afterwards. So these ones, they use a single O-ring on the inside there. I do not understand why. Because the heater hoses, we've never had coolant leak issues. You can pull them off, put them back on all you want, but guess what? They have double O-rings inside of there, and there's never an issue with these heater hoses for 20, 30, 40 years now. So they get these big hoses, and they use a single O-ring on there. And it must be something to do with cost, because I think it was a 6.4 diesel engine, the Power Strokes. Um, they had these upper hoses right in this area right here. And they used to leak all the time just on their own. Quick to connect like that. And guess what? The service replacement hoses, the upgraded, re-engineered parts, guess what? They had double O-rings in there to fix the issue. Yeah, so that's just a quick tip for you guys. Also, these newer oil filters are coming out from Ford, okay? So... These newer filters, you look at them, and they look like they're fake. And someone slapped a label on them that says Motorcraft. It's a label now. It's weird. Okay, it looks fake. And I, th I thought they were counterfeit at first, too. And the reason being is for probably the last 30 years, this is how a Ford oil filter looked. They actually printed onto them, and it went all the way around. And now, the new ones, you pick it up looks fake and someone slapped down a counterfeit sticker on there. But it's not. These are genuine oil filters from the dealer and this is how they're doing all of them, not the sticker. On one side like that. Just so you guys know, they're not counterfeit. Okay. So this vehicle right here was brought in. Like I said, the guy just said, I want to price an engine. I said, I gave him a price and he brought it up to do it. And I didn't find out till later why we're changing this engine out. 
and I guess he had a broken spark plug that's stuck down in cylinder number two here and might have some valving issues. And he's like, that's it, I'm done. I just want a new engine and we'll go on from there. So this one over here gets a little more interesting. So uh, that engine over there I got in about two, three days from the dealer. This one over here, the dealer said, great, two, three days, maybe a week. Come to find out yesterday, after I tore it apart like this, that, hey, the engine's not going to be here for a month. A month. Oh. So this vehicle's going to be here for a while. And they're trying, work, working hard to get uh, one from, I believe, Texas uh, next week instead. We'll, we'll, we'll see if that happens. If you guys didn't know it already, engines, uh, chains, everything, every little thing of, on these Ford vehicles or just vehicles in general are really hard to get parts for nowadays with COVID and everything. Uh, it's, it, it, there's a lot of back order parts nowadays. So this one right here is a little bit more interesting. So this one came in for a diagnosis. He had a cylinder six misfire, which is right here. Okay, he had a cylinder six misfire. No one could figure it out. They put coils, uh, injectors, spark plugs, everything into there. No one could figure it out. He's thinking, kick the roller followers. Saw my video about the roller followers kicking out and hard to diagnose misfires. I looked, I looked over everything. And I agreed, let's go ahead and pull the valve cover and check since it's so common. I pull the valve cover and everything is okay on the inside there. So that's not a roller follower issue causing your misfire. And I start looking at it a little bit further on there. And I noticed I heard a vacuum leak sucking sound right in the intake runner for number six here. Which is really weird. I've never seen the intakes on the 543 valve crack ever. Never. Okay, so that's kind of weird. Could it be from the brake booster hose back here? It likes to come off. Nope, it was definitely right here at number six. So what I did is I actually busted the smoke tester out, smoked the intake, and it just came rolling out from underneath here. And then there's a little hole in the side of the intake right there that was poofing out of too. Well, that's weird. I don't think it's cracked. Never seen one cracked since... 04, when they first came out, never, ever. Uh, I think it's melted. The way it looks, it's melted. Why is it melted? So what was happening is he, of course, had a lean misfire because there was tons of air being sucked in that was not metered only to number six, and it leaned it out misfire. Pretty simple. So I said, I don't think it's cracked. I've never seen one of the seams on these intakes crack ever, nothing ever. I really think it's melted, especially since I'm seeing a little poof of smoke coming out right in this area right here so i pulled it off pulled the engine out once i sold the engine and wow sure enough the intake is freaking melted so the whole thing's melted up inside of there so when this happens when you have a plastic intake melt like that the, the reason being is hot exhaust gases or combustion gases or uh, the actual fire from the combustion process is making its way back up into the intake. The intake should only flow air and that meets up with fuel right here and it goes down and out. It stays pretty cool. It should never get hot exhaust gases from the combustion chamber back up through here. So there's definitely something going on with the valving and it's not a catalytic converter that's plugged up because that can also cause a melted intake from a plugged up cat converter. And it's only affecting number six, not any of these other cylinders on here. So I imagine it has a valving issue with the intake valve or something like that, uh, not sealing right and it's coming back up through here and melting the intake. I said, I gotta pull all this apart, pull heads, send them out to the machine shop and everything else, valve job, check it out, see why it's happening, do a leak test on them. It'd be, you know, three grand or so, maybe more than that. Uh, with all the machine shop work, he said, nope, put an engine in it, I'm done. So that's where we're at with this one. So when this one comes out and goes in the stand, we're gonna take it apart and see what the heck is going on. So it's definitely an oddball uh, failure on here. So, yeah. So this is the engine from the 07 right here. Uh, and you can see we just got it out last night, swapping everything out on there, made all new, new manifolds, pipes, everything. 
Uh, so that's all good to go for the customer going back together. And whenever you're in there changing all that stuff, like I said, you want to change all your heater hoses and coolant hoses. And of course, we're changing trans cooler lines because they like to crack right here where they quick connect up by the radiator on there. So I'll show you over here how they look. These are the old ones right here. So up in the front of the vehicle where they connect into the um, coolers up there, right here, the quick connect where it goes into the actual pipe right here, they like to just shear off and crack right there. They dump tons of fluid and they burn your transmission up in about five minutes or less. So um, so here's all the cool hoses and stuff like that. There's the new intake for the other one that's melted. And I have a whole box of parts here for a 3.5 liter uh, water pump job on a 2011 or 2014 Explorer 1 and 2 second gen. Uh, with the inverted chain on there. So I'm gonna try to shoot a video on this one. I just shot a video on the first gen water pump uh, job. Uh, so I'll be putting that up soon, but it's hard to, to edit that. It's a lot of clips in there. And you guys are probably wondering, what the heck is this thing right here? Well, this I picked up the other night. It's a 2021 uh, F-150 Platinum. Uh, I decided to let's go ahead and try the new Fords that are coming out. And I just, you know, saw a commercial about it, been kind of following it for a while and decided to check my local favorite dealer. And sure enough, they had a platinum black and chrome on a lot. And I've heard a lot of people are having trouble getting these things, had it ordered since July of 2020. And uh, yeah, this thing is incredible. Got that new car smell. Not crazy about the color here, but it's like a camel color. It's pretty nice. It's got the leather, uh, the stitching, and then the inlays here are suede. You can see them there. Um, there. I didn't pull a sticker off yet. Stuff like that. And it has that folding shifter and 12 inch screen. Oh, it's craziness inside of here. And these ones, I guess, are actually one of the two 2021 models. The other one being the Mach-E that is going to be self-driving, basically hands-free driving uh, to assist you going down the road. So I just picked it up. I'm still trying to learn everything about it. It's, it's pretty freaking sweet, though, um, and I hope to do a little overview video of it because there's a lot of new technology in these ones uh, that's really, really impressed me, you know. I mean, it looks really nice. So hopefully I'm happy with my purchase. And then once, uh, so the software for the self-driving on these is not yet available. The hands-free driving, uh, the Copilot 360 2.0. Um, that's supposed to be out fall of 2021. So once the software comes out and they upgrade it on here, I will of course do an overview of that. All the hardware is already on here. It's all set to go. They just need to finalize the software. So, of course, there's a 3.5 liter Ego Boost in here. It has a lot of new things on there. Like, I've never seen, this looks like an EGR cooler. You know, probably 2021 emissions, they had to add the EGR back into it. it has the new yellow coolant, of course. It's just totally different under the hood. And I'll go into this stuff in detail. Uh, in my overview video, I just want to give you guys a sneak peek. It's pretty crazy. The uh, master cylinder down there and the ABS HCU and module are all combined into one here. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. It's totally different. Perfect little spot for your washer fluid. Snuck that in there. So yeah, I took the plunge and bought a 2021. I waited, I did not want the 18 through 20 models uh, and I decided to go for this one. They just happened to have it in stock. So very, very excited about that. All right, so that's about it. I just wanted to give you a quick update of everything that's going on around the shop here. There's some interesting projects. There's interesting problems like the melted intake on that one that I'm gonna do a follow-up video. We're gonna tear it apart on the stand there and see what the heck happened. Why is it melting like that? I've never seen that on a 543 valve. I've seen it 
on the three O's and the early four O's with the, the EGR pipe coming into the intake. It'll melt it from plug cats, okay? Uh, but I've never seen it in a 543 valve uh, to melt the intake like that. But it's definitely a valving issue going on. And then, like I said, on the 2021 I just picked up, I'll do an initial impressions video, hopefully a review video, you know, maybe a year or two from now once I have some time with it. And then once that hands-free, you know, driving a software comes in, hopefully I'm going to show the install process for that. And then, of course, do a test and review of the hands-free driving. Uh, like I said, that's, that, that's uh, uh, one of two vehicles as of right now uh, that that's, that feature is available on. Um, the other one being the 2021 Mach-E uh, that's coming out. So that'll be interesting to try. Really interesting. It's getting closer and closer to to emulating uh, Teslas. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.